For years, George St. Pierre refused to call himself a retired fighter. That finally changed on Thursday. Hello, everyone. Former two division UFC champion George St. Pierre has officially retired. Breaking news coming down this Thursday morning. He announces the news at a press conference in Montreal, hanging up his gloves after a legendary career that spanned multiple decades and 15 UFC title fights. My name is Sean Oshadi. I am joined by my fellow A-side compatriot, Mark Romandi, over on the other side here. Uh, and Mark, I mean, at this point, George St. Pierre goes down as one of the greatest ever. Uh, a 20-2 and two UFC record that spans across three different eras. He walked away from two different UFC titles at different points in his career. He managed his career on his terms, always with class, always with dignity. Uh, and in the end, he admitted that he hoped today that to, to put together a fight with against Habib Nurmagomedov. The UFC declined, and once that failed to come together, he decided to call it a career. And he leaves us with this quote, which I felt was fitting. I don't always know what I want, but I damn know, or I'm sorry, I don't always know what I want, but I damn well know what I don't want. And what I don't want is to retire too late. And to me, that sums up the everything that is George St. Pierre. So I want to ask you, Mark, he's retiring today. Is this the right time? Would you have liked to see one more from him? Or is this the right time? What is your takeaway from today's announcement? It feels like it is the right time for him because of all the things that he was saying during the press conference about, like like you just said, about him wanting to go away at the right time and not before it was too late, which is something that he said prize fighters, combat sports athletes do too many times. His last fight, he won the middleweight title. The fight before that, he defended the welterweight title. He is still one of the best ever, even, even right now, he's probably one of the best fighters in the world at his age. But... I guess he felt like because things were not going his way from a business standpoint, trying to get that Habib fight, it didn't make sense. And maybe nothing else really did make sense for him at this point as far as advancing the legacy that he has talked about so much. It's not really about the money anymore for him. It's about the fight that's going to elevate his legacy. He felt like Habib Nurmagomedov was that fight. And if the UFC doesn't want to do that, there really is nothing right now for GSP to do in the UFC that would elevate that legacy. So I guess in, in his mind, it is now selfishly as a fan of the sport, as someone who, who I, I was a fan of George St. Pierre for, for many years, even before becoming a, a, a MMA journalist, I would, I would have not have been upset if I saw him one more time or, or two more time times in the, in the octagon, because I feel like he still has it. I feel like he's not at that point where, it's a little bit worrisome when he gets in there. He, again, in his last fight at UFC 217 against Michael Bisbing, he finished Michael Bisbing, the middleweight champion, and won the title. So uh, from that point of view, I feel like he does have more left. But we see so few times, Sean, a fighter actually do right off into the sunset when they are on top. And this is about as on top as a fighter has been in the UFC on the way out. So... More, more power to George St. Pierre, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, he leaves the sport at age 37. And like you said, in his last fight, he defeats Michael Bisping for that middleweight title. It felt like he had a little bit left. But like you said, there is, it is so rare in this sport, especially in combat sports overall, but in this sport, especially to see someone walk away at the top, someone walk away with more left to give as opposed to the opposite, which seems like we always is always what we get, uh, sort of the retirement tour, guys like Anderson Silva or Vitor Belfort or v Tito Ortiz, or you can go down the line, these guys who maybe stay too long, longer than they should have. Selfishly, though, I will say I, I am sad that we never saw the Habib fight. I, I think that would have been a very fascinating fight, uh, and it would have done a lot for both men's legacy. Are you sad we never got that one, or do you understand where the UFC is coming from in that regard? No, I, 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 like you, would have really liked to have seen that fight. I have, I have mixed feelings about that fight because part of me is sick of this of this glut at the top of the lightweight division and wants Habib Nurmagomedov to fight the, the rank contenders, the Tony Ferguson's of the world, the Dustin Poirier's of the world, so on and so forth. But I can't, I can't lie and say that GSP versus Habib wouldn't be a very intriguing fight. Do it at a catch weight. It didn't even have to be at lightweight necessarily. It didn't have to be for the belt. It just needed to be those two guys. And then you wouldn't have an issue with the, with the division being 
in upheaval if GSP were to win and then not defend, defend the title like he did in the middleweight division a, a couple of years ago. So, yes, uh, to answer your question, Sean, I, I would have liked that fight. I still would like that fight. I know that it doesn't seem like it's possible right now. But if you notice, if you notice, GSP did leave the door open for a comeback, which I did not expect. I thought if he was going to retire, if he was going to use that R word, it would be final. But he left the door open for a, a future comeback. He said that if Dana, Dana White calls me in a few months and has an offer for me, we'll, we'll have to take it from there. You know, may, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll have a, a different view. I can't say where I'm going to be mentally in a few months. So you never know. But it seems like for now he is retired, and that fight against Habib is is uh, not going to go down. Yeah. And, you know, it was interesting watching him today because he used the words hunger and anger uh, a lot, saying that he doesn't have the same hunger. He doesn't have the same anger that he had when he was coming up, when he was a kid, when he was still young in this game, and that it's harder to succeed in this game when you just don't have that fueling you. And that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, when you look at this guy now, I mean, this is a human being who has been in our lives more or less since 2004. Uh, he has he has accomplished virtually everything that you can accomplish in mixed martial arts in the ufc he mentioned you know he was asked today about his favorite memories and he mentioned two specifically one uh getting dropped by carlos condit in the middle of his comeback title fight at, right after a knee injury by a head kick and then coming back from that and defeating carlos condit via decision uh and also secondly was when he lost to matt sarah in the first fight against matt sarah and then it, it, it still stands today as one of the biggest upsets in the history of the ufc and he picks himself back up and he gets back on the trail and he avenges that loss ultimately. For me, I will admit, I mean, my first experience coming back to the sport, I, 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 I saw the sport when it was first brand new UFC one. Uh, and then I kind of didn't see it again for a large portion of my life. And I came back. I remember the first pay-per-view I came back to see because a bunch of buddies were watching it was the Matt Hughes two fight. And then George St. Pierre comes out here and head kicks Matt Hughes and wins the title and it's this big moment and that kind of got me back into this. Uh, what is your favorite memory of George St. Pierre's? What is your lasting impression of George St. Pierre? It's a good question. There, there are many and, and I think that he in many ways he he transcended the sport because he he broke into the mainstream as far as sponsorships, getting getting those those big blue chip endorsement deals that he got. He was one of the first fighters to ever really wear a suit, you know, actually come come dressed up to media appearances. And if you look at media days now, almost everyone is dressed up wearing suits or wearing dresses. And George St. Pierre was kind of the the beginning of that trend long before before Conor McGregor wore an August uh, McGregor suit to a press conference. George St. Pierre was doing it and he just brought a different class and a different dignity and to the game and, and and he and and the way that he manicured his his career and he tailored his career it was it was very much under his own uh designs and not anyone else's designs not the ufc's designs it was what george st pierre wanted and that is very commendable as far as a moment there are so many but i have to go back to the one that i saw in person that i covered myself and that was ufc 217 at madison square garden George St. Pierre beats Michael Bisbing and he stays in the cage after the fight. People are going home 20, 30 minutes. George St. Pierre is still inside the cage, still dressed in his gear with his coach, Faraz Sahabi, just kind of taking it all in, letting his feet continue to touch the surface of the octagon. The way that he lingered there for so long, it felt like at that point it was going to be his final fight although that was obviously not official at, the, at that time, but it was just something else to see someone coming back from a four-year layoff from a, a length of time that many people didn't think he would ever come back, let alone come back at anywhere near a high level. He finishes the middleweight champion, wins a second title, and and he's just in the octagon for seemingly forever, just kind of just drinking it all in. I'll never forget that that moment. You know, we talked about this yesterday a little bit on the live chat, and now that this is official and he has walked away, it feels like a conversation that people are going to be having for a while now. Where where does this man rank among the pantheons of, pantheon of all-time greats? Because I don't think that anybody, I don't think there's anybody out there who doesn't throw him in among those all-time greats in the immediate 
conversation, whether it's top two, top three, top five, wherever you want to put him, he belongs in that discussion. And I don't think anybody would argue against it. But now that he has called it a career and he finally has said that our word, he is retiring. Where do you feel like he walks away from in that ranking? Where is he currently as he leaves this sport? He George St. Pierre is in is in the top two greatest fighters of all time, in my opinion. And you can make a very, very strong case for him being number one at the top of that list. Certainly, if you just look what he's accomplished, nine title defenses in the welterweight division, two-time champion in that division, held the title there for six years and rarely even lost a round in that time. And and he, just dominant, classy outside, no no scandals, no drug test failures, nothing like that. And then again, comes back after four years and wins the middleweight title, becoming one of just a few fighters to ever win titles in different weight classes in the UFC. The resume stands for itself. He never, he never lost to someone that he ended up coming back and 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 beating. He he lost to Matt Sarah, came back and avenged that loss. Lost to Matt Hughes, came back and avenged that loss. Something to be said for that for certain. And I think that his resume stands up with any any fighter in history. Yeah, I I agree with you one hundred percent. And in my mind, he leaves as the greatest of all time. I mean, you look at what he was able to accomplish, especially in his second run as UFC welterweight champion. The list of names he was able to beat over that time is absolutely sensational. And I hope that time does not deteriorate it away as people see these names and maybe think of them as lesser than they were in the moment. Because you just look at his last, the winning streak that he retires off. Josh Koscheck, Matt Hughes, Matt Sarah, John Fitch, BJ Penn, Tiago Alves, Dan Hardy, Josh Koscheck again, Jake Shields, Carlos Condit, Nick Diaz, Johnny Hendricks, and Michael Bisbing. He caught all of those guys in one of their best moments of their career. And it, it maybe in retrospect, it doesn't look as good, but it definitely was amazing in the moment. In my opinion, he leaves as the greatest of all time. He has the only people he ever lost to. He avenged those losses in brutal fashion. And also, I will say, I mean, his champion uh, championing of PED testing, increased drug testing, more stringent drug testing in this sport. Uh, I feel like that is a positive legacy that he leaves uh, more so than than anything else. Like you said, he always carried himself with class and professionalism, and he really elevated the sport just by his mere presence in it. Uh, and I think he will be missed. I, I, I know he will be missed. So my final question to you, man, I mean, we have seen a lot of false endings for, for our legends in this sport. We have seen guys exit, come back 10 years later, sometimes even for, for random fights, random one-offs. Do you believe this is the end of George St. Pierre? Is this the final time we will have ever seen him uh, in actual competition competition setting, it's a good question, and, and I do want to add a, a few more things before we go uh, to, to to add to his resume. Sean, a Canadian hero, one of the people to really bring Canada into the sport of mixed martial arts. He really got that sport to be very popular there, and it's and it's been a big part of the sport uh, in in his time. I mean, it's been some of the best cities. Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, they, they've been huge cities for the UFC and for the sport of mixed martial arts. And he was a big part of kind of bringing the sport to the mainstream there. And also, he's one of the top draws in terms of pay-per-view buys in UFC history. Now, we talked about all of his great accomplishments inside the octagon. In addition to all of that, he made the UFC a boatload of money from his pay-per-view fights. And, and he was just a guy that, again, kind of crossed over into the mainstream, to mainstream sports. And he was looked at as a top athlete of the likes of, I mean, almost like the Michael Jordan of MMA, especially in, in Canada. Uh, as far as whether he's going to come back or not, I don't think he will. Uh, although it was, it did seem significant when he left the door open at the press conference. I do think that him saying things like, now the stress is off and how, he was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis after the fight with Bisbing in 2017. And he said it may not have actually been going up to 185 pounds as much as it was just all the stress that he puts on himself. And he said something very similar when he stepped away again uh, the, the first time when he, when, he, when, he, when he dropped the Walter Wade title back in 2013. So I don't think he will go away. I think there was a sense of relief on his face and in his words on Thursday morning at the press conference. And I think this is probably the last we'll see of George St. Pierre as a competitor, but I'm sure we'll be seeing more of George St. Pierre and other aspects of his, of his life, whether it be movies or 
Uh, he said he's always going to be training. So I think he's always going to be around in some respect, but not, not actually inside the cage. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, in the end, once again, George St. Pierre retires today, February 21st, 2019. He exits with one of the most perfectly crafted careers you will ever see. Everything was always on his terms and always with dignity. Uh, and we it, we will miss him, man. I mean, he was a tremendously important figure for the sport. 37 years old. Thank you for everything, George St. Pierre. My name is Sean O'Shaughty for Mark Ramondi over there. Keep it locked to MMA fighting. We will have continuing coverage of George St. Pierre's retirement and everything else moving forward. Uh, thank you guys.